you buy a game, you usually know what you've signed up to fight. Because, of course, you've vibe-checked the box art, or perhaps you've played this kind of game before, and you've made some assumptions about the sorts of enemies you expect to be blasting into smithereens. But very occasionally, some enemy will turn up that just doesn't fit with the rest of the game. At all. Prompting you to ask, how the hell did this thing get in here, where did it come from, and why is it my problem now? Prepare to be very confused by these seven inexplicable enemies who wandered in from a different game. But we're spoilers for the following. Growl is a game that asks, how could Indiana Jones be sexier? With the answer being, if he had an even more defined six-pack and cared deeply about animal welfare. Whew. Cared so deeply, that is, that he's prepared to risk life imprisonment by wholesale murdering poachers in this early 90s side-scrolling beat-em-up. And when we say beat-em-up, we also mean explode em up and occasionally elephant em up Although there are various enemy types presented in the game, they all have one thing in common. These scumbags believe exploiting animals for personal gain is fine, and would have the ivory off an elephant faster than you can say, oh no you don't, get somersault kicked instead. Also, all the enemy poachers are human. A weird thing to mention? Yes, we agree. But mention it we must, because in a truly bizarre scene that the game has not foreshadowed at all, when you get to the end of Growl, the final boss poacher bursts open and an evil alien explodes out, before helpful on-screen text explains what the heck is going on here. This is the final boss controlling evil hunters. Oh right, well glad we got that cleared up. Presumably this plated rolling alien monster got programmed in by accident, perhaps by a programmer at Taito who was working on the company's alien filled Darius space shooter and accidentally drag and dropped the wrong files into the wrong folder. Okay, that doesn't make much sense, but look at this. You can see why we're grasping at straws. Oh look, this random alien also has a mouth laser. Chill. The final boss is a massive curveball in Growl, not least because it asks us to believe all the poachers we've mangled thus far acted according to its sinister will or something. Why does this horrible alien want to poach earth animals? Is ivory a requirement for faster than light travel? If it is, elephants I recommend you keep it on the DL. asked you to point out a threat from outer space in Majora's Mask, you'd probably point towards the big scary moon that's about to crush everyone. Yeah, that big scary moon that's about to crush everyone. Head over to Romany Ranch, however, and you can discover something quite extra. Terrestrial. Extraterrestrial. This will make sense in a minute. Sure, this ranch might seem safe with its cute little doggy racetrack and rolling hills, but chat to the youngest resident, also named Romany, and you'll discover something sinister. She's noticed that once a year these otherworldly floaty creatures come down from the sky in a glowing orb and steal some of Romany Ranch's adorable cows. Even though that's something that aliens do and this is a Zelda game, a series which has never mentioned aliens before or since. <laughs> So suddenly you go from a game where you're fighting fantasy monsters to save the world to a game where you're sniping aliens to stop them stealing cattle. Oh, and if you fail, well, the aliens abduct not only a bunch of prize cows, but also little Romany. Look, there are enough nightmare creatures I have to fight in Hyrule. Can these weirdos find a different planet to bother? Yeesh. Okay. 
Okay, look, there are already some fairly inexplicable things in Mario Odyssey. Like, when Mario possesses a frog, what happens to the frog's mind? Oh, oh hang on. Hello. Oh, Mr. Miyamoto. Hi, I didn't know you were watching. It's destroyed. It, the frog's mind is destroyed. Uh, okay, wow, I thought it was maybe left deliberately ambiguous, but... Uh, what's that say? Say again? Everything Mario possesses experiences total brain death. Right. Yeah, I'll tell them. I said I would. I said I would. Jeez. But even more inexplicable than that is the presence of one enemy in particular in this colourful 3D platformer. An enemy who somehow has ended up in a children's game full of cartoon enemies like these silly rabbits or this big funny bird. <laughs> We're talking about the ruined dragon. Yes, despite looking like and having the name of an enemy straight out of Dark Souls, the Ruined Dragon, also known as the Lord of Lightning, is somehow a thing in the latest 3D Mario game. Nintendo's cheerful plumber could not look more out of place in the Ruined Kingdom, which is the extremely odd level where this metal AF dragon resides. The Ruined Dragon's list of attacks is pretty much the only thing about this boss enemy that feels like it belongs in a Mario game, because at least defeating it involves, for instance, avoiding these spiked discs and waves of electricity before platforming up onto its head for a ground pound. Hey. And not, I don't know, plunging a broadsword into its foul heart? Unlike every other Mario enemy, the Ruined Dragon doesn't vanish into a tasteful cloud of smoke once defeated. Instead, it lies still, only offering the depressing comment that it is so tired if you talk to it. Probably because, like all the other Dark Souls bosses, it is a magnificent beast doomed to a slow and possibly endless descent into ruin. Can the Ruined Dragon even die? Yes. Yes, hello Mr. Miyamoto. Yes. Yes. Permanent state of undeath. I'll tell them. I'll tell them. I have to change my number. Wolfenstein 3D is a pretty straightforward game with a very straightforward goal. Climb through the maze-like levels, collect all the stolen gold, and crucially, shoot the Nazis. But for players who like to explore, there are some slightly less corporeal enemies that one can stumble into, as the Wolfenstein creators at its software decided to take adorable arcade classics and turn them into your nightmares. Find the secret level episode 3, floor 10, and you're greeted by... Whoa! Is that Blinky from Pac-Man? Man, they look scarier when they're f***ing massive. The entire secret level is built to look like a game of Pac-Man, right down to its map layout. There are gold chalices to pick up instead of little pack dots, one-ups instead of power pills, the walls are blue now, and the whole time you're being stalked by Blinky, Pinky, Inky and Clyde, in what is, needless to say, a strong departure from the Nazi hunting that makes up 99% of Wolfenstein 3D. The truth is, these things are terrifying, not only because they can just appear around corners to scare the living daylights out of you, but also because they are invulnerable to your many bullets. Although that probably won't stop you panic firing every time you turn to discover one right there! Ah! And though getting got by one of these ghosts isn't an insta-death like in Pac-Man, they will quickly drain your health to zero. So while this level might be a treasure trove of extra points and extra lives, you can still die to these very far from home ghosties, whose presence in a Wolfenstein game is never explained. Or they might just shorten your life IRL when they silently creep up on you. Ah, would you stop doing that? My heart can't take it. Although apparently the Mac version is worse. Ah, no, 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 no. You don't understand. It thinks for itself. It writes its own code. It tracks its targets. It learns to blend in. You won't see it coming. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a game about... Um, hang on, I know this. Is it fighter jets? No, that's hawks. There are a lot of these. Hang on. 
Right, looked it up now, sorry. It's a tactical shooter in the long-running Ghost Recon series that sees your special forces crew fighting on the island headquarters of a technology firm, where a private military company has taken control. Ghost 1-1, one -one, this is Ghost Lee. I'm two mics at your location, but a guy, something bad's on my ass. It's a serious game with a great deal of beards and grunting, in which you typically spend your minute-to-minute -minute gameplay doing things like deploying aerial drones, plotting tactical incursions, performing first aid on yourself, and visiting a factory that's making Terminators from the movie Terminator. Sorry, did I read that last one right? Yes, I apparently did, because in an extremely bizarre crossover DLC event in the first months of 2020, a two-part mission was added to Ghost Recon Breakpoint, in which you make friends with a time traveller who has you face down a new enemy, the T-800 Terminator. Except this one doesn't have Arnie's face, because I guess Arnie's face is expensive legal property. To be fair, the Ghost Recon series has form when it comes to beaming in movie baddies for no obvious reason. In 2017, the Predator from Predator showed up in a DLC mission for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Which is also odd, but for our money, nothing beats the tonal shift of seeing killer robo-skeletons from the movies suddenly rock up in the otherwise pretty serious breakpoint. Frankly, it's a tonal shift we welcome, and we're surprised at ourselves that we missed out on playing this DLC when it first launched. I mean, what else was going on in the first months of 2020? Oh. Ants? Is this some kind of a joke? You got ants in your pants, call an exterminator. I'm on vacation. What? How big? Command & Conquer Red Alert is a Cold War real-time strategy game about conflict, resource management, and... SPICE! Yes, yes, and SPICE. Thank, thank you, Tim. Okay, but seriously, these games may be a little eccentric at times, but for the most part the gameplay is strategic military conflict against military targets like tanks, enemy bases, infantry and Tesla coils. Explore the game's bonus missions, however, and you'll find yourself in a world where your biggest threat has far more than two legs and your superiors are just as confused as you. And? Yes, with zero explanation, you're thrown into a bunch of strategic missions where your main enemies are giant ants. Our base is under attack. These insidious insects have different ranks, from scouts to full-on fire-throwing foes. Our base is under attack. Yes, sir. Of course. Unit lost. This is not the kind of Red Army I was expecting to fight today. And not only that, but they're all huge, easily messing up your troops and your base. Unit lost. Unit ready. Alright, you mess up my base, I'll mess up yours. Hi, uh, London Zoo, uh, do you know where I could get an anteater the size of a London bus? Mr Miyamoto, you work at London Zoo? Get what you need, get out. Safe zone, get ready for a fight. Hold on, you tell it quiet. It always feels like enemy Call of Duty players have some secret advantage, like better perks or faster internet, or they're able to target you with a 400-foot lizard. To be fair, the latter example only applies in Call of Duty Warzone, the battle royale mode of Call of Duty where you fight opposing teams across an increasingly gas-filled battlefield. And that, for several weeks in 2022, inexplicably also featured King Kong and Godzilla. This extremely odd clash of genres was a special event in celebration of the movie Godzilla vs Kong, and just like the movie, had the absolute nerve to position this clash between giant ape Kong and the king of monsters Godzilla as something like an even matchup. Even though Godzilla would win easily a hundred times out of a hundred, as I will explain to my colleagues again as soon as they let me back in the work WhatsApp group. You would think that having Godzilla and Kong rock up on your island to kill you and each other would be a real good reason to put aside the Battle Royale stuff and have everybody team up to defeat these astonishingly powerful foes. Or at least try to dig a big hole in the dirt to collectively hide in. Frag out. But humans being humans, you're expected to keep headshotting each other even as Godzilla's atomic breath raises the landscape. 
Pretty sure this lizard's extremely radioactive, folks. You're all dead anyway. You're also expected to keep headshotting Kong and Godzilla, because unloading clip after clip into the Titan enemies in this baffling Warzone event somehow counts as collecting intel. The intel is stop shooting Godzilla and start digging a hole! In fact, the intel is battle bonuses like a gas mask or a heavy weapons drop. Or if you manage to stay alive long enough and deal enough damage to fill your intel meter, a scream device. I don't know, I think the situation engenders enough screaming already. Once unlocked, the scream device lets you target other players with the Titan's attacks. Though of course, you being distracted by this jumbo tape deck is just the opening Godzilla needs to laser you very hard in the face. Just a superior monster in all categories. What categories, you ask? Well, aggressiveness, bite power, terrain, and speed. I've assigned each a score, weighted by overall temperament and canonical height across cinematic entries, excluding 1998, to find So those are just some of the enemies that turned up in games where they just really didn't fit the mold? Like, why were they there? We don't know, but why are you here? You're here to enjoy some fantastic videos. There's some here. You should hit that like button and subscribe if you really enjoyed it. That's a really good thing to do while you're here. And uh, maybe go, go uh, and join our Patreon and you can join our Discord, folks. Ellen, and sorry, I've just had Mr. Miyamoto on again. All right. Uh, he, wants, he wants it to be known that every time Mario dies, it hurts a lot. Apparently important. If, okay. Oh, God.